When most people think about an old growth forest, they think of a really unique and special place. Huge, mature trees and all sorts of species interacting. Old growth grasslands are the same. They have also taken centuries to develop and the grasses and the plants in those systems are also really large, really old, but all their size is below ground. It's hard to tell the difference between an old growth and young grassland, but trained eyes can see key differences like higher biodiversity and a world of wonder underground. The deep roots, organs, and seed banks in grasslands help them bounce back after disturbances. We are getting more and more information that the ecosystem services that grasslands provide are as, as great as the ecosystem services that forests provide. We're starting to understand the incredible carbon that is stored below ground in grasslands. But these complex systems face significant threats. In some regions, like the Cerrado in Brazil and North America's Great Plains, more than half of grasslands have been cleared for farmland and tree plantations. So how do researchers restore damaged grasslands to their former glory? A review in Science lays out what scientists have tried so far and the questions yet to be answered. There's a technique that's widely used in temperate Europe, that's hay transfer. That's when you collect the hay on one pristine grassland to transfer it to another one that's degraded. Hay transfer is effective in grasslands with annual species that produce viable seeds every year. We also tried in some degraded grassland in Brazil. It did not work at all over there because in Brazil, the grassland I worked in are mainly composed of perennial species. Perennial species don't have the same regular cycles of seed production as annuals. Some only create seeds on occasion, like after a fire. Others rely more heavily on their root system to reproduce. This makes establishing perennial plants quite the challenge in grasslands. Those are ones that we're seeing more and more that they need to be part of the grassland system for a really successful recovery to occur. So how do we do it? Do we actually have to transplant individuals? Do we have to put in some of those root fragments? Those are all ideas that um, have potential value. In addition to losing native species, some grasslands have also lost the disturbances that maintain them, like fire and grazing. These are crucial to preserving their biodiversity and preventing trees from colonizing. It's very important to understand the reason at which you have to apply this disturbance. You cannot apply the disturbance regime that you understood for the pristine grassland right away because the vegetation is not the same. You're going to have to uh, adapt your disturbance regime as the restoration goes and as species colonize or as you introduce species yourself. There's one experiment where we grew some plants for a number of months and years and then we burned them at different age to see what age they needed to be to be transplanted in the wild and be able to sustain fire. Because it doesn't make any sense to transplant six month seedlings that are gonna die with the first fire that we cannot control. There's many ways to have to iterate and have to intervene along that recovery trajectory to have success. And that just assembling, putting in the desired elements and then walking away probably won't be successful in many of these grasslands. As ecologists work out how to monitor and manage restored grasslands, they also hope to preserve old growth grasslands that remain intact. I'm hoping that people think about what type of agenda we can put forward to actually better maintain and protect these incredibly special old growth grasslands that are on the earth.